In this video I want to take a look at setting up uh, an eaves detail in a block built house. Now in this instance I'm going to have a go at setting one up with a 200mm cavity. Uh, you can see this one here that's in the workbook is a 150mm cavity and uh, you can see there's a couple of little details I'm highlighting here that I'd like to change the way that the seat cut or the plum cut and the seat cut is done on the rafter and the size of the uh, wall pit is 100 square I want to have to change that and I'm going to take a look at uh, the sizings or the spacings for the battens as well this is it complete and we can see some of the difference as well too I've got a, a, a dry wall on it and I've got a 200 cavity and there's a special tie for that there and I have a 300 millimeter soffit so the size of the soffit and I have an eaves ventilator shown here as well so to start off with I'm going to create my wall starting off here with a scale of 1 is to 5 uh, so my wall is a 20 millimeter wall on the outside and I have a, a, a 40 millimeter wall or a cavity on the inside and ideally if this was being designed uh, I think uh, the preference for some people would be that it would be a single block wall uh, with insulation, maybe a polar tech type thing, but uh, if there's a 200 millimeter cavity, uh, you'd want to have um, it specially designed by an engineer that you may have a, a, a increased size wall on the inside, which is a, a maybe 150 or 225. What I've done here now is I'm, I'm setting up the rafter at a 30 degree angle, and, and I've got it divided into thirds. And what I'm doing is I'm taking, I'm going to draw my wall plate here as well too, where it's meeting on that one third. And I'm just getting the sizes to match here from where the rafter runs down at the edge so there's no cut on it. And uh, I'm drawing in my joist, and the, the joist is a 150mm joist. And uh, that comes in at 30mm uh, on the, the drawing. And it's quite a fit, quite a squeeze to fit this onto the A3 sheet. But uh, if you start very low on the page, you'll get that. And you can see the construction details that I'm going here. I'm measuring out uh, my 300 millimeter uh, face or soffit. And once the thickness of the plaster is on, it really matches the size of the fascia, timber fascia. So you still have your 300 millimeter soffit that's shown in here. The support as well, too, for the soffit, I've changed from the original one. In that it's a, a batten that's turned around on its flat. I've drawn in a small vent there, which is equal to a continuous 25 millimeter slot along the run of the soffit. The tilt and fillet's shown in there as well too, and my one thirds of the of the rafter, which was shown as well. This is the support I was talking about, the 25 millimeter, 50 by 25 millimeter, and you can see uh, it would be side stitched onto the the rafter as well. So, like I said, uh, if this was being designed, it would have to be done by an engineer. The internal wall could be increased from a, a 100mm block to a 150mm block. If it's in exposed areas, it would have to be even uh, more detailed. It could be a 225mm block. And uh, I'm drawing in a 150mm insulation. If you couldn't get 150mm insulation, you would have uh, maybe two 75s together and the actual wall tie would be what would be securing those through those and uh, this is a, a closure at the top of the cavity to prevent uh, a thermal loop from air getting circulating in this here the size of the wall ties that would have to be used as well would have to be substantially bigger than what would be your standard wall ties and the way that they would clamp the insulation through as well and you would want to prevent any thermal bridging occurring in that too. so I think that's why a lot of people would probably prefer to have the likes of a polar tech wall as opposed to a um, 200 millimeter cavity although 150 mil cavity seemed to be norm for a while there as well so the, a 150 mil I don't think causes as much trouble uh, drawn in a blue line here showing my felt which is running out over the end make sure it goes out over the end because it has a run not to lie in the gutter but to run down into the gutter I'm colouring in my insulation areas here and uh, I'll put in the detail afterwards just to highlight where that would go and uh, of course this runs right up under the ease ventilator which is a plastic covering which allows a 50 millimeter unobstructed uh, airspace in that and I have uh, two layers of 150 millimeter insulation as well too all I'm doing here with the, the circles is kind of giving myself a, a nice looking curve to 
squeeze the insulation around that. That'll be quilt insulation that'll be used there. And you can see the drywall would also be included in that. Now, technically, if uh, the wall is to be airtight, there should be uh, a skim coat of plaster placed on the wall. Or sorry, not a skim coat of plaster, but a, a scratch coat of plaster on the wall so is that uh, you put on your air tightness tape and then you can bond your slab onto that there. But for the detail that's shown here, I think it'll be fine. Cross hatch just showing my uh, block. In the detail, you may be given a height maybe for uh, a window lintel, which will be placed somewhere down below the soffit size there. You're talking about, if you're measuring this here from the top, you'd be talking at minimum of 400 millimeters from the internal seam height down to the, the top of the lintel. Uh, the wall tie is shown in here will be, there, there's something in the region of about seven per meter square is what would have to be used in that. And uh, just the, if you look at the lines closely, you can see where I've kind of squeezed it, showing that the insulation would be squeezed over to those edges there. It wouldn't necessarily be at the bottom where I'm drawing now, but uh, definitely over underneath the eaves ventilator. And I can draw in a breather membrane there, and the air tightness tape, which would be at the corner of that. Also showing there are a few broken lines indicating the, where the joist would carry on over as well. Here I have a book showing an old detail, but it shows a picture of an ease ventilator and it also shows a diagram showing the unobstructed air passage, which uh, shows insulation placed in there and where the ease vent is also.